thank you very much, uh, for instance, uh, to Barbara Borroni and the organizer for having invited me. Uh, this meeting is very interesting because a typical dementia is intriguing for uh, us neurologists. And uh, I think that Neiman Pixi uh, is also a disease that uh, recapitulates in some how, uh, how complex uh, this domain is. Uh, Neiman Pick type C disease uh, uh, is a very rare disease, autosomal recessive, and a neurodegenerative disease caused by mutation in NPC1 or NPC2 gene. And uh, uh, this mutation impaired the lipid trafficking into the cells and produces uh, an excess of storage of glycosphingolipids in the brain, the liver, and uh, uh, other tissues also. The disease is uh, panectinic and show a sporadic uh, appearance occurrence and affect about uh, 100,000 uh, individuals. I think, however, that this value will change uh, very quickly due to the uh, diffusion of all molecular genetic techniques. From a clinical point of view, uh, NPC is uh, in the domain of uh, pediatrician because there are several clinical forms, uh, perinatal, early infantile or late infantile, and uh, juvenile. Obviously, uh, we as neurologists are in very interested in the adult form considered after 18 years. Uh, there are three main uh, compartments of uh, symptoms, uh, a systemic involvement with the uh, hepato and splenomegaly, uh, neurological involvement, and uh, also psychiatric and cognitive disturbances, uh, and uh, uh, age at onset modify clinical phenotype and the adult for psychiatric problems, ataxia, dystonia, in general neurological uh, disorders and dementia very frequently. And here you can see a slide coming from uh, the International Disease Registry, and you can see how ataxia, uh, dysphagia, vertical supranuclear AIDS palsy, and also dysarthria are very common in the late onset NPC. And uh, we have also to consider that one third of patients have a late onset form after 18 years, but that also some cases have been described till 70 years. So uh, it's very interesting data. And uh, uh, there are a number of issues and difficulties because uh, uh, NPC is always considered only as a children's disease. And since it's rare, nobody takes into account the diagnosis, especially in the adult domain. And uh, frequently is confused with other diseases, so uh, it's uh, under-recognized, misdiagnosed, under-diagnosed. When to suspect NPC in the adult, this is the question, and how we can find the hidden Neiman Pixie uh, patients. For instance, geographic isolates, uh, Gianluigi Zanusso <laughs> told about Calabria is a, uh, as much geographic isolates, and obviously recessive disease increase uh, the probability to be found in uh, geographic isolates, but also uh, not only Calabria, but also northern Italy, as uh, such the valley of uh, Brescia uh, studied by a group of uh, Alessandro Padovani uh, and Barbara Burroni uh, found uh, NPC cases. And also uh, we have to consider a clinical niche uh, constituted by movement disorder, psychiatric disturbances, cognitive impairment, especially of the frontal type, and extrapyramidal disorders, such as Parkinson or Parkinsonism. Movement disorders in NPC cerebellar ataxia is a central feature estimated in very large prevalence in patients as an early age at onset, but it's not a pure ataxia because it's uh, frequently accompanied by dystonia or dystonia plus, uh, means vertical uh, supranuclear palsy, cognitive decline, dementia, or psychiatric disturbances. And also myoclonus tremor and chorea may also occur in these patients. Uh, 
supranuclear vertical goids palsy is present uh, uh, is a very specific symptoms, especially downwards, and uh, is present uh, in most of 65% uh, um, of patients, but it's not an early sign, so uh, we have to uh, consider the time of uh, onset of these signs. In the adult NPC, psychiatric features are observed uh, from 45 to 86 uh, uh, of patients. Uh, there is no a specific profile of uh, uh, neuropsychological, neuropsychiatric symptoms. However, they are atypical because uh, frequently patients are confused. Uh, visual hallucinations are very frequent rather than um, acoustic hallucination. And, uh, also, there is a treatment resistance with an unresponsiveness uh, to treatment. Moreover, schizophrenia and core symptoms of the schizophrenia fluctuates, but also depression, bipolar disorders, and mania can be present and showed by patients. Cognitive impairment is early. There are about 30% of cases of NPC that start the disease with a cognitive impairment. And uh, the, this impairment is, uh, uh, in any case, observed in 70% of patients throughout the course of the disease. But uh, uh, even the uh, neuropsychological deficits are well recognized. Uh, on this review, on uh, 118 patients, only 23 have received the neuropsychological test and have been uh, characterized from this point of view. So much more it, uh, uh, we need to go in this direction. And uh, uh, the type of cognitive disorders is a frontal lobe uh, involvement. Here, this is the uh, family described by Hans Klunemann in 2002, two sister, uh, who started dementia with the frontal features, had a reduction of language and perceptive behavior, followed by attitude movements and ataxia, but uh, the two sisters received diagnosis only after neuropathology and molecular genetic um, with confirmed NPC2 mutation. Um, so in uh, uh, successively, uh, all patients, uh, uh, all researchers, uh, defined that uh, uh, cognitive disorders uh, manifest as a memory and executive impairment, but uh, uh, only uh, very recently, uh, there is the definition that executive function and attention are very more impaired than uh, memory. And uh, here, just to, um, just to show you how uh, the domain of behavioral variant, frontotemporal dementia, and then PC share uh, common symptoms. Uh, not only from the behavioral point of view, but also the psychiatric point of view. So uh, this niche uh, constituted by behavioral variant of frontotemporal dementia warrants a screening on NPC when patients is negative for a, a mutation of our gene causing frontotemporal dementia. However, Despite uh, the uh, involvement of a frontal lobe, adult NPC patients show a relative structural integrity of the frontal cortical regions. And uh, uh, from a neuropathological point of view, they show uh, alteration of the nuclei, striatum and thalamus, as well as cerebellar Purkinje cells. So uh, we have uh, uh, evidence also from other neurodegenerative diseases about the role of cerebellum because we in spinocerebellar ataxia disease, especially in scasetin, you know that disturbed behavior and dementia are leading symptoms and these patients show also this executive um, profile of a neuropsychological impairment. 
Moreover, executive deficits uh, are very frequent, common uh, post cerebellar surgery. And there is also um, the uh, evidence quite uh, large that cerebellum has a role in psychiatric disease, such as schizophrenia, bipolar disorder, and autism. Very recently, uh, functional MRI studies and tractography supported the hypothesis that cerebellum uh, cortical, uh, corticopontocerebellar pathways uh, could provide a substrate for the cerebrocerebellar communication during cognitive processing. So it's possible, this is an hypothesis, the disruption of the frontal subcortical cerebellar circuits could trigger cognitive and psychiatric symptoms in uh, niemann pick disease. Another niche is constituted by Parkinsonism, and uh, you can see here how only 10% of NPC adult patients show uh, extrapyramidal symptoms, but also in progressive supranuclear pulse palsy, we have to um, pay attention because the patients uh, with the PSP show uh, vertical supranuclear palsy, get disturbances, and akinetic rigid uh, syndrome, and uh, uh, frequently unresponsiveness to levodopa. And uh, PSP has also uh, pathophysiological changes in common with NPC because it is also a tauopathy. However, several studies conducted in uh, this niche in PSP cohort patients uh, showed, uh, didn't show uh, mutations. Uh, we have done uh, a study uh, on uh, a group of fit fit patients with dementia plus. Dementia plus means dementia plus uh, uh, behavioral disorders, uh, psychiatric symptoms, but also Parkinsonism. And among these 50 patients, we uh, identified four, as you can see here in this table, one with a um, PSP and the other with uh, the other three patients with a corticobasal syndrome but the mutation were in heterozygous state. So this uh, study has been conducted also with uh, Andrea Dardis uh, and uh, other co-workers and uh, was very interesting because uh, really we don't know if the role of this mutation is causative, at least in a subset of patients peculiar, uh, peculiar also because they are Calabrian. Um, or uh, this uh, uh, mutation can be a risk factor for neurodegenerative diseases. Because we have already the evidence that metabolic diseases are risk factor for neurodegeneration, uh, we know that uh, carrying a Gaucher allele uh, increases the risk for Parkinson or Levy body dementia in much higher. Uh, carrying uh, an allele of uh, an Iman PK or B uh, so increase in the same manner the risk of Parkinson's disease and also carrying uh, polymorphism of a PLD3 or, and also mutation can increase the risk of causative for Alzheimer's disease. So uh, there are also mm, genetic association in FPC2 with late onset Alzheimer. And there are also the evidence that there are some genes linked to lipid metabolism that interact and increase with the, at the risk. A from a clinical point of view, the study of the registry um, and especially among the 57 NPC families in uh, more than 21% uh, percent of uh, patients had a member with a neurodegenerative diseases. So they are heterozygous uh, because the disease is uh, in the classical form recessive. So there is the evidence. And we have also an evidence that exists a link between neurodegeneration and lipids because uh, cholesterol and sphingolipids affect uh, a beta generation and uh, aggregation, because also amyloid precursor proteins and other associated proteins can influence lipid metabolic way, pathway. So 
why and uh, what are the differences and what are, what they have in common neurodegenerative disease and lysosomal storage disorders differences are obviously alzheimer disease most common neiman pick disease is rare chronic progressive and progressive but the obviously the uh, clinical features for both is uh, different However, uh, there are some commonalities at uh, histological point of view. Sinaid plaques and uh, neurofibrillary tangles, but also lipofusinosis is present in uh, Alzheimer patients. And uh, in Neiman Peak C disease, lipid inclusion, but also neurofibrillary tangles and uh, a beta-42 amyloid accumulation is present in cortex and in hippocampal neurons and in blood vessels. Uh, there are no plagues. So uh, from uh, the Alzheimer pathogenesis, we know that uh, the amyloid cascade hypothesis supports the idea that beta amyloid is central to the pathogenesis. And we have the evidence that the uh, processing of a beta IPP occurs in uh, lipid drafts in the membrane because base 1 and gamma secretases are present in this microdomain. Uh, this mostly occurs in the endosomes. And, uh, however, the relationship between beta amyloid and tau degeneration is also the link between the lipid dysregulation and tau pathology is not well understood. From Neiman peak pathogenesis, we know that abnormal cholesterol metabolism and docetic transports is very impaired because NPC1 and NPC2 um, uh, are thought to work in tandem to aggress the lipoprotein derived cholesterol from lysosome, and cholesterol does not exit from the cells and accumulates in the endosome. And in this endosome immunoreactivity, also uh, amyloidogenic processing of APP in Neiman PIC-C neurons localized. So uh, also in this case, tau protein, uh, concerning tau protein, several work uh, evidences that there is an axonal degeneration in NPC, but how exactly this process occurs is unknown. So in conclusion, Alzheimer disease and NPC show intriguing similarities, including neurofibrillary tangles and deregulated A-beta metabolism. The strongest common denominator, however, is the link to genes involved in cholesterol metabolism. A lipid imbalance in neuronal membranes could be an important driver of neurodegeneration. So take home messages for this presentation uh, are the following. The adult form is rare, yet still under the agnoset. A disorder associated with a progressive cognitive dysfunction and uh, several motor systems impairment. It's important to consider clinical niche in order to identify adult and PC patients. The study of cognitive deficits in this adult NPC might hold the clue to understanding cerebellar and deep nuclei contribution to the executive function. Neurodegenerative disorders and late onset NPC share neurological signs and symptoms and also intriguing commonalities among proteins and probably common pathways. There are evidences that, at least in some cases, heterozygous mutation have an impact on phenotype, but increasing studies and their significance are mandatory. This could have a future relevance and high impact to increase knowledge, not only for metabolic, but also for neurodegenerative diseases, whose epidemiology is so devastating. The faith of Alzheimer's disease and PC is intertwined by their shared pathophysiological mechanism, and we hope that the animal models of NPC translate into potent therapeutic agents targeting cholesterol trafficking, ultimately benefiting both AD and NPC patients. Identify NPC is possible. The drug is uh, uh, already present, so we can uh, um, go uh, straight in this uh, direction. And uh, there are the novel recommendations for the detection in the annual Neiman Peak 
type C, uh, and molecular genetics and biomarkers specific profile can be uh, put in place to uh, reach a correct diagnosis for uh, our demented patients. Thank you very much.